extensive moisture across the Gulf Coast region this afternoon as a cold front works southward through the central U.S. and the Midwest. Our surface map this evening looking like this. It's a little bit like January. Lots of cold air coming down from Canada. The 540 decameter thickness line all the way to Chicago, Omaha, and central Wyoming. The leading edge of that cold air mass reaching all the way to Texas, southern Alabama, with a front along the Gulf Coast region. And down in that area, quite a bit of moisture. Let's take a look at the precipitable water. Those values in southern Texas and Louisiana running about 1.5 to 2 inches. We have seen some very high amounts over the past few weeks, but as we go into later April and May, these values become much more common. And just to give you a sneak preview as we go through Saturday and Sunday, even more moisture closing in on the 2-inch mark down along the Gulf Coast. A little bit of a reprieve on Sunday as we get another push of cold air. And then that moisture makes its way back up in the middle of next week. And this is another way to look at things, the dew point temperature. So as we shift into spring, we're going to start looking at some more of these parameters. Dew point, very important as we go into storm season. Throughout the remainder of the weekend, most of the higher values confined to Florida and the immediate Gulf Coast region. And you can see that moisture clearing out around Sunday as we get cold advection all the way into the southern U.S. Then we start to see the moisture trickle northward later on Monday into Texas. There's the return flow, some of it reaching all the way up into the Kansas City area early Tuesday. More moisture coming up for late Tuesday and Wednesday. Here we're priming things up for a possible early outbreak, maybe on Wednesday. Doesn't look certain. The storms may be a little bit high-based, but Thursday is looking even more significant. You can see that boundary right there tightening up. That's going to be the dry line. Good potential for severe weather on Thursday. Then on Friday and Saturday, chances go up even more, especially for Saturday as a larger wave comes out of the southwestern U.S. Then storm potential moves into the Midwest region. Chicago, Madison, even Detroit may be under the gun for later on. So let's return to that surface map. Large ridge, high pressure, extending from central Canada into the central U.S. That's driving that cold, dry advection across much of the country. The only areas escaping that, the far southeastern U.S. and the desert southwest, and of course California as well. Let's take a quick look around the country, looking at the METAR plots. The northeastern U.S., rather cool, damp, and those temperatures in the 50s. 50s all the way down to Pennsylvania, even into Virginia. Overcast conditions, they're going to be north of that polar front boundary, which is way down here. So a little bit of overrunning playing into this and also some enhanced upper dynamics as the main storm track is up to the north. As we move south, we get into some of that warmer air, 87 degrees at Columbia this evening. So our warm front is definitely going to be in this region right here. This is going to be a sea breeze right there at Myrtle Beach. Very warm conditions across southern Georgia, southern Alabama, and Florida. As we go into Louisiana, yeah, the heat extends even down into that region. But as we cross into Texas, we pick up that frontal boundary. So, yeah, that front's going to be basically right in here. And I did kind of gloss over what was happening in Georgia. Frontal boundary right through here. And that's helping us support a little bit of thunderstorm activity. They have a marginal SPC risk for much of the Piedmont region and southern Appalachians. Heading into Texas, we're going to be seeing that cold air continue to diffuse southward towards the Gulf. Heading up into the North Plains area, looks a little bit like winter there. 
some lake effect rains and clouds across Lake Michigan. Gale warnings for Lake Superior. And there we get into some of that bitter cold temperatures in the lower 30s from Duluth to Fargo. And you can see a little bit of that cold core convection there. Some snow being reported at Devil's Lake and Fargo. Heading out towards the Rockies, things warm up. We pick up 70s there at Grand Junction. You can see quite a change, though, with Denver there. They're getting some of that cold air on the west side of that air mass. So a little bit of snow breaking out there in the Denver area and dammed up against the mountains right there. You can see Alamosa, a toasty 66 degrees. 63 there at, I think that's Eagle. And then heading into the southwestern U.S., yeah, the heat, 93 degrees at Phoenix, 93 at Tucson, and just kind of a dry southwesterly flow. It's also hot in California, temperatures up into the 80s across the San Joaquin Valley and the Mojave Desert. And then heading up north, drought conditions continue up there in Oregon and Washington. Temperatures in the 50s and the air mass rather dry. There's a quick look at the map from the National Drought Monitor. Most of the problems are in the southern Rockies. Very high drought category there around El Paso, Alamogordo, and Carlsbad. In the Corn Belt, some problems there as well. And across the northern tier states, also running behind schedule on precip. And yeah, look at California there. They've definitely caught up on the precip. The East Coast looking good as well. Okay, let's shift gears here and talk about the upper level patterns. We've got quite a bit of ridging on the West Coast and the Northern Rockies all the way up to the Yukon, a cutoff high up there in the Northwest Territories. This is a high meridional pattern, lots of transport of heat and moisture north and south. And typically when that happens, we see a little bit more anomalous weather. Also a split flow pattern. There's the southern stream right there. Receiving a third stream running through the northern tier states and another belt way up to the north. And the Hudson Bay vortex, it's broken up. One lobe up there in the northern Labrador Sea, the other around James Bay. And as we take this forward through the weekend and next week, you're going to see this troughing here kick out a couple waves there into the western U.S. and southern plains. The first one is going to hit around midweek. There it is. Very fast moving. You can see that ridge reaching its peak around late Wednesday. So that'll tend to suppress the severe weather a little bit. That doesn't completely rule it out. However, it does make it a little bit challenging to get storms forming. But then on Thursday, different situation, probably widespread potential for severe weather across much of the Great Plains. And on Friday, more chances continue. But Saturday is probably going to be the big day. This trough here really digging, and that may carry some of the better energy up to the north and a little bit less down in the southern plains. And then we see the potential move into the Midwest for Sunday. Could be some storms out there around Chicago, northern Illinois, the Quad Cities, and southern Wisconsin. And that's going to be the last chart that I have there. Some more troughing coming out of the southern Rockies, and looks like our prevailing flow is out of the west. So probably an active period here of weather going into early May. So let's go ahead and wrap it up with our surface chart sequence going into the weekend. You can see rain breaking out across much of Texas and Oklahoma as that overrunning gets established. That's partly due to pressure falls just above the surface, drawing that moisture northward and up over that cold dome. That's what we refer to as isentropic lift, and we tend to get a lot of stratiform clouds, rain, and embedded thunderstorms if the instability is high enough. So that'll be kind of a stagnant weather pattern persisting through possibly Sunday. Looks like a wave starts to shift all the activity eastward on Sunday. A little bit of clearing there in Texas, the ridge starting to move overhead. 
and off to the east. Then we see that return flow start to get set up for late Sunday and Monday. Initially, it's going to be dry. But by Tuesday, there should be some significant moisture making its way northward. Then going into Wednesday and Thursday, this is where we get into more of a classic Great Plains severe weather pattern. The GFS here going for some convective weather in the lower plains for Thursday may be focused along that warm front right there. The dry line may be active as well. Friday, it's a little bit indeterminate. You can see it's in between weather systems, maybe some potential there around St. Louis. Here comes our next weather system out of the southwestern U.S., and then we're going to see probably another big severe weather day on Saturday. And that'll concentrate on Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. You can see the better backflow is up in this region right here, the triple point up there around Russell, Kansas. So this area will have to be watched for tornado potential. Kansas in April, yeah, that can definitely be quite a handful at times. Sunday, things shift up into the Chicago area. However, we still have this front extending through Texas and Oklahoma. Plenty of moisture. So there could be storms all the way down in this region, but that's still pretty far out. And here comes our next weather system out of the northwestern U.S. That'll take a day or two to cross the Rockies, and we'll probably be back in the thick of things on Wednesday, which is May 1st. So we are looking at an active weather pattern coming up for next week. Remember that if you want to check out the Monday stream, you'll need to be a Patreon supporter. So to do that, just click on that link. Otherwise, we'll see you back on Wednesday and we'll cover that developing weather situation. All right, take care and we will see you soon. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.